Durst the worst. Oh, Durst the worst. Durst is the worst. Durst 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 the worst. Okay, so just for the record, my name is Tommy Molina. It's spelled T O M M Y Molina M O L I N A. I'm the Milwaukee organizer of Wasla Frontera. And this is the official Wasla Frontera response to the Milwaukee Police Department's press release. Wasla Frontera calls on the Milwaukee Fire and Police Commission at its meeting tonight to take all steps necessary to advance the proposal to amend Milwaukee Police Department rules to stop them from acting as a partner with the United States Immigration and Customs Enforcement. Our proposal is simple. At its core, it's that, that unless there's a valid judicial warrant and one that has been issued for an individual, MPD shall not use any resources for immigration enforcement. Judicial warrants... Judicial warrants must come from a judge, not the Department of Homeland Security. This does not prevent MPD from doing its job in responding to a situation. But what it does do is protect the due process rights of members in our community. Immigration is a federal issue, not one for local police. Federal law is very clear on this. When immigrants fear contact with MPD might lead to a confrontation with ICE, they are much less likely to call 911 to report a crime or to otherwise cooperate in any meaningful, meaningful way. And that makes Milwaukee less safe for all of us. When MPD assists ICE, it wastes precious police resources in a city with a tight budget, as we have heard repeatedly from Mayor Barrett. This includes the city having to pay out millions in costly lawsuits because of MPD practices of racial profiling and a lack of meaningful community collaboration. Our recommendations to amend Milwaukee uh, Police Department Standard Operating Procedure 130 were submitted to Chief Morales in May of this year. Policy Chair Nelson Soler directed Chief Morales to meet with Voces and create a working group that would come back to the Fire and Police Commission with a joint recommendation. Contrary to MPD's recent press release, MPD, under Chief Morales' leadership, has not collaborated with Voces and allied organizations in this process. Indeed, he has said that he'll continue to cooperate with federal agencies, ICE included, when called upon. and stated that at the Fire and Police uh, Committee public hearing on October 3rd, that policy does not matter to build community trust. Shockingly, he said that after a meeting with 200 people protesting the delays on the, recommend, on the recommended changes to SOP 130, and close to 40 people, many of whom are here today, who testified on the need for this change to build community trust. We have also run into numerous delays in the FPC process itself. It's time for, FPC, for the FPC to act promptly so that more families are not hurt by a current policy that allows ICE to call on the Milwaukee Police Department to tear apart families and create more fear of local law enforcement. As has been overwhelmingly expressed at the Fire and Police Commission hearings on this matter, we call on them to immediately schedule a special meeting to vote on SOP 130. Yeah. Yeah. The police detention of Jose Alejandro de la Cruz Espinosa on September 23rd and his transfer to ICE in the absence of a judicial warrant highlight the need for this safeguard to be in place. ICE and the Milwaukee Police Department have mischaracterized and quite frankly character assassinated Jose Alejandro de la Cruz as a dangerous person. Nothing could be further from the truth. He has a dated and very minor misdemeanor record. That being said, the probation violation they allege is that he was driving without a license to take his daughter to school. The reality is that because of ICE's failure to secure a judicial warrant, 
They instead chose to enlist the support of the Milwaukee Police Department. The De La Cruz family had overcome poverty, established a small construction business, and had finally secured funds to try to adjust his immigration status when he was apprehended by ICE. As Christine De La Cruz, Jose's U.S. citizen wife and member of the Oneida Tribe Nation said, we've been together for 16 years. He's my best friend, loving father and loyal friend to many. He's a hardworking man and does all he can to support our family. ICE and the Milwaukee Police Department have treated us as if we were nothing. Jose is still in ICE custody today. The incident has received considerable press and videos of the arrest are, are available to the public. Milwaukee at its best is a city of inclusion. The current policy divides the community and makes it weaker. We cannot allow the nightmare of what is happening to the De La Cruz family to happen to another family. We call on the Fire and Police Commission to ensure that this message of a wel welcoming city is reflected in our police immigration policy and aligns with the policies of Milwaukee County Sheriff Ernell Lucas, who has made it clear that deputy sheriffs are not an arm of ICE. The Milwaukee County Office of the Sheriff Directive on ICE detainer request states that the Milwaukee County Jail shall not hold any inmate in custody based upon an ICE detainer request absent a valid judicial warrant. <laughs> as the xenophobic and racist Trump administration escalates their campaign against Latino and immigrant families to pass policies of family separation and racial profiling, we expect a chief of police to be responsive to community needs. Before a final confirmation vote on the reappointment of MPD Chief Alonso Morales, we hope Morales will demonstrate that he will work with the community and will not use city resources to do ICE's work. He should show that he understands the current procedure wastes police resources and deters people from cooperating with the police. Thank you very much. Yep. <laughs> Hi, bitch!